commission in its legal argument stated that the existing voter register which was compiled in 2012 and revised since by limited exercises has been held by the apex court as not being reasonably credible deputy attorney general Godfrey yabu adami urged the apex court not to impede the ac's quest to obey the law the seven member panel that heard the case was presided over by the chief justice Kwesi Enin Yabua. other panel members are justice jones doche paul bafuboni sule badegbe Samuel K. Mafusau, Nene Amegacha, and Professor Ashikote. The court in its decision held that the EC is an independent body and will only be directed by the court if it acts contrary to law. It said the commission can carry out the registration exercise in accordance with CI 126. This CI excludes voter ID card and birth certificates, but allows the use of passport and a Ghana card as source document for prospective voters. The NDC Cedric Ketia, however, had this understanding of the decision. The court has just delivered a verdict which has granted our request for the inclusion of the existing voter card as reader document for the compilation of the register. And I think that we are most grateful. I think that this is the most substantive issue uh, for which we, we, uh, we came to court. So we will get back to office and we will address a full-blown press conference on the consequential matters arising. But how Thank does you very much. You feel well, we feel vindicated because uh, the court itself, in an earlier ruling, has clearly stated that the possession of uh, uh, an existing voter's ID card means that the, 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 the holder is a citizen of Ghana who is qualified to be registered and to exercise his or her, her, her powers. And so uh, the court couldn't have gone back on its own earlier ruling. And it did also admit that the right to vote, once it accrues to a person, cannot be taken back in a whimsical and capricious manner in which the Electoral Commission sought to do. There is currently just one case before the court in relation to the compilation of a new register. This is the case filed by Ashaman MP NS Nobe, which is pending at the High Court and due for hearing on Monday, June 29. And this is where we transition to look at some of the mainstream issues. And we want to move the conversation forward. Absolutely, we do. Uh, so after that report filed by Joseph Akable, capturing uh, everything that happened yesterday with the reactions uh, to this ruling. Let's introduce you our guests who are joining us via Zoom uh, as we look at the way forward with this decision. Uh, let's say good morning to you, uh, Mr. Gary Nimako, who is a legal practitioner. Uh, Mr. Roxin Nelson Dafamako is also joining us via phone. Dr. Kojo Asante is Director of Advocacy and Policy Engagement with the CDD. Good morning to you, uh, if you can hear me. And then Dr. Kwame Asante is a political scientist with the University of Ghana. Let's begin the conversation uh, by going to the phone lines. Uh, let's talk to Mr. Dafamako. Good morning to you. Uh, thank you for your time. Yes, good morning. Good morning to your viewers. Uh, it's unfortunate that I am unable to join the Zoom. Apparently so. Are you in the constituency? Yes, uh, the network is so bad that uh, we are unable to do anything by, by internet. Okay, we'll manage with what we have. Uh, thanks Very for your time. I'm not Very sure I've had your reaction to yesterday's uh, ruling by the Supreme Court. Surprised? Were you expecting it? Well, I, I, I'm surprised about the ruling, particularly the, the decision by the court to grant those two particular reliefs and dismiss other reliefs that were as it were consequent upon the grant of those two. Uh, and so the attack is of they are putting in the whole damage that the Supreme Court. Mm. Mr. Nahomakwa, it looks like we have to work on your telephone line so we can hear you a lot more clearer. Uh, it's a bit difficult uh, hearing you. So let's, uh, guys, let's drop the line. Let's try and raise him on another uh, line and see if we can hear uh, pretty clearly. In the meantime, in the meantime, we Roland? have uh, Dr. Kujo Asante, the Director of Advocacy and Policy Engagement, CDD. And uh, can you can you hear us? Uh, no. Good morning to you. 
Well, before we do that, let's listen to a Deputy Attorney General, uh, Mr. Goffred Gof uh, Dami, who spoke to our colleague Joseph Akable. In 1992, so, so the, the point must also be made that the vote, old voter ID card, there's no magic about it. There's no magic about it in the sense that the very first time there was reference to an old voter ID card as an instrument for identification of a potential result to vote was, was, was in 2012. Mm -hmm. So in 1925, when the CI-12 was enacted, there was no reliance on an old voter ID card. In 1982, definitely, there was no voter ID card. And indeed, in registration exercises in 2012, 2018, 2019, limited registration exercises, most Ghanaians who applied to ESA for the first time to vote, they have no old voter ID card. Mm -hmm. So what is this fast about an old voter ID card? I think that only the NEC perhaps will, 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 will be able to tell us the, the value that they, they have uh, on, or the value that they place on the old ID card and the reason therefore. There are those who hold the view that had the changes not been the changes that we saw happen at the commission by virtue of the removal of some of its leaders, and uh, if that change had not happened, and in fact they they make the point that the position that your party held was that you wanted a new register, you said the register was bloated, and so if it had not been the changes that had happened with the president making a new appointment, we may not be having a discussion about a new register entirely. And in simple, in simple terms, uh, you succeeded either directly or indirectly to get a commission to agree to what you had held proud to come into power. First of all, we're taking me clearly into the realm of speculation. You are also seeking to introduce politics into the work of the Electoral Commission. I think that that must be deprecated. That definitely does not hold at all. The Electoral Commission is independent. Whoever occupies the position of chairperson of the Electoral Commission has the necessary discretion and, and independence to, to operate. And, and I think that the Electoral Commission itself, the, the previous, as previously constituted, if I may put it so, clearly on account of what transpired in the Abu Madan case, would definitely have carried out a new voter registration exercise because they themselves told the court that about 56,000, no, first and foremost, the point might be made. During the Maru Abu Madan case, the position of the electoral commission was that majority of Ghanaians, what you said with the NH NHIS card, the majority of Ghanaians, majority of people over 40 million. That's impliedly the case. Majority of, and then they, they come to court to produce evidence of those who are to receive the NH NHIS card, and they come with 56,000 names. So that clearly showed that there were billions of people left on the voter roll who had unlawfully entered on account of having registered with the, um, old, with, with, with the NHIS card. So that's what commission itself, if we indeed wanted, wanted to be faithful to the Constitution and also uh, wanted to faithfully comply with the other the Supreme Court, would have definitely for the need to compile a new with this register. The commission differently constituted didn't agree with the imposition of the MPP in the past. In fact, when it set up a team of experts uh, led by the late VCRC crab, uh, they recommended that you sh they should not compile a new register. That doesn't change the point. It actually reinforces my contention that they are totally independent and they have a discretion to exercise at any time. And that's what the Supreme Court has stated today that where the Electoral Commission has two lawful options available to it, it can elect to choose which one to comply with. So in 1995, as I indicated to you, the instruments of identification, in fact, there was no identification process at all, but the exercise there was constitutional. And then in 2012, there was reliance on old voter ID card, was also constitutional. And then 2020, the Electoral Commission decides that in the spirit of ensuring that the sanctity of the, um, the voters register will be uh, upheld. There's a need to eliminate the use of the old voter ID card. And the Supreme Court has held today that it's constitutional. So I think that we must be careful in imputing motives to the Electoral Commission the way they conduct their functions. The most important thing is that three decisions of the Supreme Court, approval number one, approval number, number two, and the decision today have upheld the independence of the Electoral Commission. So those decisions are very consistent with, 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 with and, and the Supreme Court perhaps ought to be applauded for maintaining that consistency. All right, so that's the Deputy Attorney General there speaking to Joseph Akable.